Welcome back, my fellow Duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. So in today's episode here, I'm going to try to get my liquid oxygen system and liquid hydrogen system up and running. We'll see if we can get that thing producing. So in the last couple of episodes, we did go out into the star map and discover a couple of oh, good places to dig some stuff up, like the gilded asteroid field over here. Ooh, the helium cloud, very nice, except for you can't get helium from it. Another gilded asteroid field all the way over there. And a glimmering asteroid field where I might be able to pick up some liquid tungsten. Speaking of tungsten, though, if we go over to the planet that I had to land on last time, which is funny because there's actually an abandoned ship mode that you can now use thanks to the latest update. But we did this maneuver just before that update. <laughs> so something you won't ever see again. But if we go inside of here, we can see that if I set this to a high priority, and the yellow alert will let me know that there is a tungsten volcano there. Ooh, I'm gonna have to tap into that here pretty soon. So another one of the updates here is that we should be able to bring the stuff in, let's be uh, gas or liquid, coming straight in from the pipes and go that right into the module here. You can see that there's actually an input and an output for gas. Uh, for liquids as well, no shipping rails though. So that's pretty awesome. So no longer do I need to have like a gas cargo canister to take to take in the gas and then just to take that and pump it inside of here like I was doing with that high pressure gas vent. Should be able to get away with less than that. All right, so for the most important thing, this is what I gotta get up and running here. So. What all do I need to do? Well, first off, I need to bring in enough water down here to where these things don't melt or have any issues. So do I have water nearby? Mm -hmm. I should have water nearby once this pipe gets built. That's what I'm working on right there. All right, so I should be able to put in a little mesh tile right there and then just drop a line down real quick for a liquid vent. That should do the trick. I'm also going to need to bring in all of my super coolant for the lines here. So that will need to be pumped into the pipe there. So I'm going to need a small little pumping station here. All right, so to get that in there, I'm also going to need a bottle emptier. So there we go. Joshua, bud, you walled yourself in. Of course you did. Right there. there you go. I'm just upgrading whatever tiles I can to insulated ceramic now that I have that available. So, there we go. We can do all of those. That'll just kind of mm, help to keep things a little bit more insulated. It's not much of a big, it's not a very big change, but um, it should affect this a little bit less, even though the other side is space, but yeah, it's not that big of a deal. All right, so for the automation that's running the aqua tuners here, obviously I only want to run these when the liquid is above a certain temperature, but I don't want to run it if this down here gets too hot. Since I have so many of these, there's a chance I might overpower the steam turbines, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take that thermal sensor, I'm going to run up to these right here. I might actually skip the middle one because that that's going to be to cool some other stuff. All right, so that temperature sensor there goes to the one side of the AND gate, that one goes to the other, and that one goes right there, so just like that. All right, so now we can see that water is coming in, so that's good. This here is going to cool down the hydrogen, and it's also going to cool down the oxygen. But on its way back, I suppose, gosh, am I gonna try to make it do the steam turbines as well? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a lot of work for one aqua tuner. It might not be necessary though. Well, my game just crashed to desktop. Crap. Ha, there we go. All right, so now I've got water that's flowed in here. So we've got lots of it right down there. So that's good to go. We'd go ahead and put some thermal sensors right down here. That's going to be to check to make sure that the liquid is down to the right temperature before I run this pump. I'm also going to equip that one with an AND gate just in case I need to do something else. Alright, so now we've got the electrolyzer running inside of there. Ooh, we can see hydrogen over here. That's looking pretty good. We do have a little bit of oxygen, but you know what? That's not a big deal. 
because this too, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a filtered system. So I was thinking, how, do, how am I going to get hydrogen all the way from over here into a rocket that might be all the way over here or, you know, wherever else I have the rocket? Well, the answer to that is to use the gas port rocket loaders and unloaders, I think. <laughs> I hope it works this way. So what I should be able to do here is put a large liquid tank, at least once I get a thousand steel again, put that right there, have a liquid port loader positioned right here. I might actually have a couple of them. I, I might replace both of these, but I can take the liquid that comes right out of here, put it right there, store it inside of a tank or a, a rocket. And my hopes with that is that it stays nice and cool. Yeah. All right, so using insulated liquid pipes here, in this case, ceramic, I'm going to take this, I'll jump it over here and I'll actually put it right inside of this port. Now I'm going to have to do the same thing for this one as well. So I'll bring that in right here. For anybody curious about what I've been doing in the background, well, I've been doing a couple of things, such as 3D scanning, generative design, trying to learn some new skills here. So that was last week's adventure right there, figuring out how to actually do the whole generative design. This is where you do stress analysis and it produces the shape based on what you're feeding it information wise. So look at this wild thing. Cool, that's the hot end to my 3D printer. Actually works pretty good. Holy crap, I've broken Fusion 360. I am just the edge case of software. I break everything. I don't... Well, never mind. You'll never see it. Anyhow, back to oxygen not included. What are you doing, man? Stop sleeping. Uh-oh. Now I've got programs overlapping programs. Clearly, my computer does not like what's going on here. Jeez, oh, help. I think it's just about time to fill this thing up with super coolant. I'll take that, I'll just go boop, 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 just like that. Hmm, 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 hmm. You know, the only thing that would make that even better is if we had some wallpaper. What should we have? Oh, yes. Obsidian? I think so. Or should we be real weird about it and, and put ice out here? Let's try ice. You know, just making sure I do all the productive things. Large liquid tank. There we go. Build one of those, please. Priority level, please. Haha. <laughs> I suppose it would be kind of beneficial to have two of these. Of course, I didn't really plan for that. But if we ever build this nose cone, I can, <laughs> I can just move this thing over here. And then I can actually, yeah, I could look at moving that thing too. First things first, let's actually make some liquid oxygen. All right, liquid pipes are in. Let's bring in the super coolant. Bum, 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 bum. I suppose I don't need these solar panels down here anymore. <laughs> they don't seem to be doing much. So I'll get rid of those. Ooh, and look at that. Super coolant flowing in. Oh, and it's running. We'll just set that to zero real quick. I'm not trying to go too crazy on it. So what I should be seeing is that we are going to pump up the temperature here. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, now we're talking. Now I've got super coolant in the second line. Excellent. We can go ahead and deconstruct this first one. This isn't exactly where I'd want to fill this second line, but I should be able to make it work. All right. Well, I've got a bit of an issue all of a sudden. I've got oxygen up here, and then a bunch of steam down below. Uh, but the thermal sensor is actually not plugged in. So when the game crashed earlier, I forgot to go back and plug that in again. Whoops. So we're gonna have to go in there, and we'll see what vents out. Hopefully, I don't, hopefully not too much. I might use an airflow tile here with the door above it to kind of Try to vent the oxygen. All right, let's do that real quickly. Come on, meat puppet. Oh no! Quick, disable liquid pump. All of my nice ice wallpapers melting. 
Oh no! Oh no! This is bad. That's the last thing I want to go in there. Well, I think when it freezes, it'll just come out here. Ah, ah. All right, that's good. Now we've got steam inside of there. Lots of it. Automation's hooked up. So this is above negative 183, just for starters there. If this is below 300, then we can let it run. Okay, the second loop for super coolant is full. It's not yet running because there's kind of a confusion going on here. That should go away once I get rid of that liquid bridge. Ah, see, there's the ice. Ha! Won't stay there for long. Ah, <laughs> oh, Joshua, 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 you went through the door. You could have got to this from below, but you didn't. Oh, Joshua. Lock, disable. <laughs> you made such a mess, Joshua. And now we got Super Colt inside of here. He only had one job, dude. It's my fault, though. I told him to go to clear it out here when I should have said just go up here. All right, so that still has one too many in the tile of uh, the loop, so I gotta clear one of those out. Yeah, see, there we go. Nice and smooth. Maha! Steam turbines are coming to life here. Oh, blast! I fixed this too, and then the stupid game crashed. Okay, so... I've got all the pipes up and running, and it looks like they're doing pretty good. Looks like this one uh, line up here needs to have one less block in it, so let's go ahead and empty that out real quick. There we go, now it's running. Good, 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 good. All right, so for the temperatures here, for the one that's gonna be cooling down both systems, that pretty much is if it is above negative 257 degrees Celsius. So just about, just about at zero there. The idea is to get that as cold as possible. Anything that condenses over here just falls right down and then it reaches its final cool temperature right down here by touching the metal door at the bottom. All right, so now I just wait for things to get super cold. Looks like they're doing all right. Over here, we're down to negative 32 degrees. On the right, we're at negative 36. All the way down here at the bottom, negative 183. Over here on the right, coming up on negative 210 degrees Celsius. Okay, so one of the things that's going on here that isn't completely apparent um, is that the background tiles, these things, these drywalls, actually have thermal mass inside of them. So it takes a while for those to cool down. So even though this might be all the way down here at like negative 250 degrees Celsius, the gas that's just above it is still kind of a little bit warm. You can see it's, well, that one's not, not too warm right there. That's negative 183, but just above that is negative 26, right? So it's, it, it's gonna take a while to suck in all that heat. Matter of fact, we can see that a little bit of liquid oxygen is starting to form over here on the right. Which means, if I look at this tank, I should have liquid oxygen as a, an option now. What would hope? <laughs> yep, there it is, oxygen. All right, so let's give this, whoop, a little bit laggy. Let's give this a try. I do have some liquid oxygen over here, so we can go ahead and pump that on. There it goes. And where did you go? You went inside of here, didn't you? No, where, where'd you go? <laughs> No, you didn't go in the liquid oxidizer tank. I know it's going somewhere. I can see it. Uh, where'd my liquid oxygen go? Contents, oxygen. Okay, so it's, it's in the port loader, huh? Oh no, did they change how this works? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, well I see polluted oxygen flowing past and not being stored where it I would expect it to go. So maybe something messed up. No, that doesn't seem to do anything. Oh wait, there we go. There we go. I guess they need to be enabled? I guess by default they were enabled in the past. Hold up, so. 
Okay, so this sweeper thing is still working, right? I see mafic rock and stuff here. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's all still working, but that's because those are enabled. New. No, that stuff just works. What's up with this one? Why doesn't this work? What's wrong with you? Hmm? That's liquid oxygen. Yes, you should go inside of here. No! Liquid oxygen is right here. I know. No! It's not my pipes! Crap. I thought that was gonna work. Uh. Alright, let's go ahead and move this rocket real quick. There we go. Park that on over here. Maybe this needs to be on an engine or something like that. Wait, 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 wait. I hit deconstruct on this and it's finally decided. Oh, you know what? I will bring in oxygen. Okay, you've changed your mind now that I've gone and... What's going on here? Roger. Regardless, I'm going to need some more tanks over here, so... But it does seem like I might need to activate this. I don't know. Let's wait for some more liquid oxygen to show up here. Okay, there we go. I hope this works. <laughs> oh, jeez. Stop. <laughs> there. Some made it in. Okay, good. Alright, so now I need to work on this a little bit so that it's... It's a little bit cooler. Hey, why is this pipe made of graphite, guys? No wonder it's exploding. Didn't I tell you? Make it out of ceramic. You're about to tell me I don't have enough ceramic. I mean, what was the point of all this? Oh yeah, here we go. So now I've got two liquid port unloaders and one more loader there. So I should be able to run the liquid through this. And then detect it right on over here and disable it. Just run it a nice little cycle right there. Making sure that I fill the tank every single time. Should be easy. Famous last words. All right, dupes, how much ceramic have you made? Ah, oh, jeez. None. What are you even doing over here? Like, there's only one priority. That is please. Please go faster. This, by the way, is also another way to refine some of your metal. If you happen to have access to space early on in the game. You can heat these things up and convert it. So if you take a look at the temperature here, they're just, they're silly hot. This is all gold amalgam. It'll keep going up till it actually turns gold amalgam into gold. All right, I'm gonna do the thing. Even though I don't like doing this, I will go ahead and use bridges here. Just to reduce the amount of material. Ooh, look at this. Ah. Ha, ah, that liquid hydrogen. So very nice. All right, so liquid hydrogen can actually get a little bit colder as well. So what I'm looking to do here is not only just bring it to its liquid form, but bring it almost to its freezing. So I'm going to get within... I'm actually going to go under by about 4 degrees. I think you have to go to 5 degrees under for it to actually do something different. Crap, how much uh, liquid hydrogen did I just pipe into here and not protect? Oh, no, can't tell you. Ooh. Hydrogen? Yes! Let's take a look at the gas pressure inside of here. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. So we've got hydrogen. Actually, we've got hydrogen on the left and the right. Ooh, I don't think I should want hydrogen. I should put in a door up here with a sensor for hydrogen just to kind of vent it if need be. That's what I should do. All right, I'm gonna change up the automation just a little bit here and go from a temperature sensor to a liquid sensor. That way I always have 10 kilograms or so in the pipe. What I've noticed here is that I'm pumping so little hydrogen through the pipe that it's actually picking up heat as it's traveling through here. So even though in this tank I have 107 kilograms of liquid hydrogen, the temperature is relatively warm at negative 245 degrees Celsius. So I need it to stay down here in contact with this bunker quite a bit more. 
<laughs> the liquid pipe up here froze over. Goes to show it's kind of cold in this thing. I put in just a couple of pipes right here. And that has definitely kept the steam turbines nice and cool. It's also had the benefit effect of actually cooling down stuff coming straight out of the electrolyzer. So this is actually working out really good. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Forgot about this. Yeah, airlock. If we detect hydrogen. Then that gets vented out into space. Come on, just a few more pieces of ceramic. Ha ha! All right, so just finishing up this arrangement here, I should be able to load up the rocket pretty soon with some fuel. Let's go ahead and view the interior. <laughs> okay, not a lot going on inside of here. Let's just try some of the new equipment that we have. We've got the wall toilet, and we've got some of these ladder beds, which is interesting. I wonder if I could flip that. Oh, I can. Hey, you know what? They made the hand sanitizer smaller. Look at that. It's only one wide now. Boop. That's cool. As a matter of fact, if you do this number, oh, look how much you can get in here. That's pretty good. All right, let me take a quick look at my automation here. If this sees hydrogen, then that'll work. If this sees oxygen, then that should work as well. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to have a, a switch where I activate it. That sends a true signal down to the liquid rocket port unloader, which will start to unload the liquid of choice. In this case, hydrogen is going to flow into the liquid fuel tank. And if it flows past there, then it should hit the reset, turning that off, uh, and then go right back into the loader so that it goes back into the tank over here, the storage tank. Now, I mean, if you want to make this a little bit more condensed, we could put the liquid tank's storage right next to the rocket. So it actually, it's kind of like a rocket silo fuel tank or whatever right next to it. But yeah, we'll see if it works here. Let's see just how much fuel I have. Okay, I have 318 kilograms. Let me just go ahead and set this to 300. We'll set the liquid oxygen tank to 300 and the one above it to zero. And those to zero. And I need to build a little bit more rocket there, so hang on, let's just do this. <laughs> you can build the gantry and then just kind of deconstruct it as needed. If we quickly take a look at the liquid oxygen and hydrogen system over here, it looks like the temperatures are really good. I mean, that is staying very, very cold. The oxygen's doing well. I would say the only limitation that I'm seeing right now is that I, I might need more electrolyzer. Or I could be dealing with a pressure situation where that's just spending too much time overpressured. I could adjust that. A little bit. Maybe replace this door with just a tile, but besides that, I think it's more the oxygen. Look at that, 1,400. I would have been better off had I put the electrolyzer right here and then just piped the hydrogen away. That would have worked a little bit faster. And technically, I could still do that. All right, but let's not worry about it too much here. Let's see if we can actually fuel this thing up. So, let me put hydrogen right here. Let's see if anything starts to flow into these pipes. Oh, crap. It started to run. Because it is true. But... I think the temperature in the tank, negative 249, how much is that? Pipe. Oh, that broke everything. Yeah, I didn't make the adjustments I needed to over here until later on. So the temperature's been dropping inside of this tank, but not quite enough. Uh, just because I haven't brought in enough colder hydrogen yet. Well, let's try the oxygen. Okay, so there goes the oxygen. It's now flowing. And it's finding its way into that first tank. Hey, the hydrogen's working this time too. Nice. You can see it's actually a little bit colder now, negative 250. Uh, one thing I didn't show here is I actually set this to pull in more liquid. Um, I had it set to a higher 
amount of kilograms than it needed to store before it pumped out. So I lowered that to bring the temperature down. But yeah, it looks like everything's starting to fill in. I'll probably continue to have issues with this pipe, but for right now it's working. <laughs> See, we ran out of hydrogen, so that's now just running back. Uh, we did detect it on the pipe here. Oh, that isn't a momentary switch. I gotta make that a momentary switch. But anyhow, this one over here has now disabled. Right, that one disabled because this reset it. So now the liquid oxygen is just going back into the storage tank. Along with a bit of hydrogen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Repair duties. Party level 9. Alright, let me try to fill up this liquid oxygen tank over here. I don't think I actually... I don't think I need two of these. But let's give it a try. So if I flick that, that will enable the oxygen to start to flow up. And now it's running past the second tank because it's filled it. And it's no longer flowing out more oxygen because it disabled it. Ha! Ha! And if I take a look at this rocket, fuel remaining, uh, six tiles. How about that? What I actually need here is more liquid fuel tank. If we go and we look at the actual numbers here, you can see that oxidizer power remaining 1,800 kilograms. So I, really, I only need like one of those, but I need two of these. All right, well, let me go ahead and move this electrolyzer so that it might run a little bit faster. I'm gonna have to do this quick because I don't have a ton of time, so let's just rip. Okay, so just building up some pipes here real quick, set all this to open so that we can let the hydrogen just flow through. We can even set this to open. So the thought here is that the oxygen just wants to flow down and I've got a cold spot right below it, so hopefully it just condenses right away. Ideally, I might like to have this one tile lower so that we can kind of split the oxygen and the hydrogen a little bit more, but yeah, I'm just experimenting right now. Let's just see if it works. Another thing I'm going to do here is bring in my hydrogen that I was venting just out into space because clearly I have, I have another use for it now. Let's see here, this is gonna go down. And that's up, up, up. <laughs> All right, here comes a ton of hydrogen. I wonder if I'll even be able to keep up with the amount of hydrogen I'm gonna bring in with this. That might be too much. Thing is, you can saturate this thing and then it just slows way down and doesn't work. So you gotta be careful not to do that. All right, so there we go. This electrolyzer is now all the way over here. I've got a gas element sensor to detect if we get a little bit of hydrogen and it happens to find its way down here. Although it looks like it just kind of wants to float around in there. Hopefully that will clear out eventually. Mixed gases are no fun. Although I could set it to oxygen here real quick. Let's see if I can vent it a little bit. On the other side here, you can see that I've got hydrogen. I've also got this hooked up to um, an Atmo sensor, and then I'm just bringing in, well, whatever hydrogen might find its way in this pipe here. You know, if it's below a certain pressure, then I can bring more in. Nope, doesn't look like we're going to get that hydrogen out of there. Oh well. Not the end of the world. Oh, you know what? I looked away now that I looked back here. Nothing but oxygen. This is actually working pretty good. Look at that. Just sucking down all that oxygen nice and this thing here is not backing up at well now that i looked at it <laughs> not as much as this one was although i do have a little bit too much oxygen here so like i said maybe a little bit more headroom for the hydrogen you can get the idea though you can definitely work with this and make it your own have a condenser like this, one or two of them, maybe. You know, electrolyzers above, let it go up, filter out, bring your hydrogen over next to it and cool that down. Yeah, you can do both with the same sort of setup here. I like it. Oh my gosh. Now that we can run liquid pipes and gas pipes right up to the rocket module, there's just so many pipes around our rockets now. 
Pipe spaghetti. It's just gonna be the entire map. <laughs> Ooh, look at this. So now that I have that oxygen hooked up, oxygen's flowing into here. How about that? Yeah, the liquid is not doing it. <laughs> is the water plugged in? No, not yet. But let's see here. Let's see how we're doing. We got plenty of liquid oxygen. Ooh, we've got plenty of hydrogen now. I think we might actually have enough to power this thing up and to run it out to where it needs to go and come back. So let's do that. Let's put Meep inside of here. And we're going to fly this right out to this planet here and drop off our robot. All right, Meep, you ready, bud? As ready as he'll ever be. Begin launch sequence. <laughs> These dupes. And there we go. The hydrogen rocket is off. How cool is that? And by the way, look at what I'm building up over here. It's a gassy moon mural. It's been a low priority project thus far, but eh, it's coming along. But now that I have such powerful rockets, but now that I have such powerful rockets, I should be able to go out to this planet all the way over here and maybe play around with the gassy moves. Ranch them up, bring them back. They are a very good source of meat. Ooh, look at all of that, which is going bad. <laughs> oh, well. And you know what likes meat? Mmm, I think this plant over here likes meat. Mmm, mmm, <laughs> mmm. Meep, where's your rocket, dude? I see empty space, <laughs> but no rocket. Sorry, Clay. No, no. <laughs> uh, why me? W what did I do? Oh, sorry, we never put any water in the wall toilet. So... Sorry, me. There you go, Roger. Fly out over to the Moo planet. All right, well, Meep has made it to this planet over here. So, go ahead and deploy the drone, Meep. We, oh no, you're beating up on the tile. That's not good. Quick! All right, drone, you only got one job. That tile right there. Think about it. I know you'll get to it. There you go. All right, Roger has made it to the planet. Very nice. Why can't I deploy this? Do I not have one? Don't tell me you flew all the way out here with no... Ah, Roger. Not today, Gassy Moose. Sorry. Meep! That's the door, dude. I don't think you want to beat up on the hatch. Meep! Uh-oh. Your ammo suit's worn out, Meep. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Meep, you're not stressing out fast enough. You're supposed to come out here and destroy the hatch. <laughs> I want to watch one of these rockets blow up. Who's it gonna be? Roger, wake on up. Oh, you don't get to abandon ship. Oh, you're, you're in here, no matter what. Meep! Meep, I actually can't click on your ship, so you don't get to abandon. <laughs> Let's go with the Roger here. Let's see what happens when we click this. Confirm! What? No explosion? Ah, <laughs> just rocket debris. Actually, that seems like it might be a little bit faster. Hey, what, only 60 seconds? Oh, there's a piece of rocket debris right there. <laughs> oh, wait, here's another piece of rocket debris. Got some water, some spindly grub fruit. No Roger. Where you at, bud? Oh, there's Roger. 
I don't know where you, what you came back on, but somehow you got back here, Roger. Okay. I get it. Oh, no. Well, that's going to have to be it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. The whole abandoned ship thing, pretty cool. The ability to put water and oxygen or whatever else you want to put into your rocket directly. Very nice quality of life thing. I like it. And we got liquid hydrogen and oxygen now, which is all real good. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.